please welcome Dr. Antoinette Ellis Williams. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for that kind and warm introduction. Um, I know you are trying to navigate chicken. I know my people. I know my people. I will say more on that later. Uh, to the dais guests, to the honoree, um, to the sponsors, to my Vice President of Academic Affairs at New Jersey City University, to my friend and colleague, um, Brother Harris, thank you to the Allen family for always making me feel well, and to the State Chair, Ms. Evans, it is indeed my great privilege to be here. So, you have heard many people talking already, and we have convened to talk about participation in New Jersey. My remarks will not be long. I hope that they are somewhat effective. This morning I had the privilege of sitting in on the youth conversation and to hear our community daughter, Kalina Berryman, wonderfully navigate that panel my husband, Junius Williams, in preparing today, I asked how should I present this and what should I do, and he said, he said be like uh, Richard Pryor. Someone else came up to me just before I came up and said, don't be too militant like you were last year. Somebody else said, make it short. You heard from the introduction, I am a professor, and you might have gathered by now I'm a minister of the gospel. So given all those things together, I will do my best to give a little Richard Pryor shout out. I'll try to be semi-militant, my brother, power to the people, as always. We are at NJ Bick, right? But as we talk about participation in New Jersey, the theme is straightforward, no chaser. However, leadership requires participation and engagement in the fullest sense of the word. The nullification of action results in the inability for us to take up the mantle and move forward. But participation assumes at its nexus an even playing field that garners access to the game. Participation hinges on the willingness to move with or without permission. If we're waiting for an invitation, then sit and keep waiting. The participation that we're talking about is participation that's no holds bar. In preparing for this, I remember eyes on the prize, keep your eyes on the prize and hold on. And I think about the many forms that we have to participate in, whether it's voting, tithing, graduating from college, having a savings account, keeping our stocks and bonds, writing the laws, writing screenplays, taking care of our family and neighbors, if we're not participating in saving and building our community, we are then fostering our own debt and building the larger whole. Participation means having a voice on all fronts. A few years ago, I engaged in a research project of my own, looking at youth engagement and particularly the study of African-American youth resistance and activism. I'm going to say a little bit about that, but what is important to note is that from a federal level, the critical analysis of electoral voting outcome by age in the last two national elections at the federal level demonstrates that African-Americans are voting. Two in three eligible black, black, black individuals voted in the presidential election, 
which is slightly higher than the 64.1% of non-Hispanic whites. In New Jersey, 68.5% of eligible African Americans voted compared with 634 and so I was concerned that it was simply about the 2008 and 2012 election with President Obama. But what Tom File says is that over the last five presidential elections, the share of voters who are racially and ethnic minorities rose from just over one in six in 1996 to more than one in four in 2004. And if you look at it gender-wise, women are voting more than men. Great news for electorates at the federal level. However, if we look at the state level, local election, state board election, PTA meetings, turnout's dismal. So as we consume our chicken in a nice room with lights, post-Sandy, where is our outrage? Almost a year ago, coming up, we celebrate the one-year anniversary of Superstorm Sandy. You remember those days? The days that we gathered around with the candle. We opened the stove to let whatever heat we had in. We made sure that the refrigerator stayed closed only for the bare essentials. We called our neighbors. We shared our charger. And for that moment, for those two weeks, New Jersey was at its very best in the worst of times. Arguably, the worst of times is still going on. Because when we look at the data that was presented just in early September about what's happening in New Jersey, we see that poverty reached the 52-year high. We see that the annual survey by Legal Services of New Jersey found 24.7% of New Jersey population, 2.1 million residents, were considered poor in 2011. According to Melvin Miller, this is the worst it's been since 1960 census. But we have this illusion that because we are able to have chicken in a hotel in this state that everything is doing okay. I'm not about beating up the progress we've made because it's good to be in a nice warm place. It's good to have food. However, our participation must be re-engaged. Dr. King said we have to keep the urgency of now. Cornell West said that the best prophetic hip hop music talks about the marginalized. It talks about the indignation and the righteous fact that people are in trouble. And the fact of the matter is we won't participate unless we are touched and reminded. Franz Fanon in The Wretched of the Earth argued, and I quote, zombies, believe me, are more terrifying than colonists. Zombies are more terrifying than colonists. We are the walking dead. He goes on to say, and I quote, the unpreparedness of the educated classes, a lack of practical links between them and the masses of people, their laziness, and let it be said, their cowardness at the decisive moment of struggle will give rise to tragic mishaps. Some may say he's being a little too harsh. But the truth of the matter is that there are many zombies walking and sitting among us, living dead. And courage is required and passion is required to wake us up to the call. So the study I alluded to earlier there were five things that I was trying to find out. The definitions of justice from youth perspective, the capacity for activism, the 
ability to resist the role school and community plays in youth activism, the ability to imagine the possibilities or take risks. The study included youth from K to 16 grade, which means college. And what the data showed are three things. I'll talk about these three things and then I'll take my seat. The first one, African-American youth said they used their voice when they perceived their rights were directly challenged. The youth said when they felt their rights were personally challenged, whether they were in second grade, fourth grade, or college, is when they became engaged. The second thing is that moreover, youth see themselves as key to the community's liberation at young ages. But the data goes on to say there is a feeling of powerlessness that develops the older they become. And this was particularly true for college age African American men. And finally, the third thing they said was that democratic activism and social justice are possible and evident when students have access to role models. So let's break that down. The first thing, when you perceive your rights are directly challenged, the urgency of now, unless you think that someone is coming for you or has come for you, the research shows you're not going to get up and do something. Therefore, there must be some sort of disconnect between you and I and you and her and her and him and us and them and we and all of us and y'all. And We don't seem to understand that there is a connection that bonds all of us together. Whether we are Christian or Muslim, whether they are straight or gay, the fact of the matter, if you're in New Jersey and you have not received the same services, believe you me, that ball is coming down your neighborhood. If it hasn't hit you yet, it's going to hit you tomorrow. And participation cannot happen unless there is an urgency, a now urgency, an urgency that says direct challenge must take place. Many of us have grown complacent and tired. Some of us have grown numb and desensitized. We see things over and over again on the media. We see it on our Twitter pages and we become desensitized. Nothing new under the sun, Miley. I wasn't that upset. Just that you couldn't do it so good. The fact of the matter is that we see these things all the time. And the problem is that we now expect it to be normal. It is not normal that our young men are in prison. It is not normal that children are poor. It is not normal that you do not have smart words in every classroom. That is not normal. But keep eating your chicken. Some people have gotten so comfortable in mediocrity, they believe that they have made it. You haven't made nothing. Just like the president said, if he wasn't in that nice car and he was dropped off at Brown Market, try and get a car, a cab in New York, Mr. President. And he already knows that. The urgency of now is still relevant 50 years after that great speech. Forgive me, but I am the mother of two sons. This is not some theoretical exercise that I'm engaged in. I'm the sister of four brothers. I'm an immigrant that came here and had to change my voice because people who look like me troll stone upon me. But guess what? I had to learn how to live in this society. I had to learn how to stand up and blend in but still be like a stealth bomber. That's what you have to do. That's right, I'm off text now, brother. I couldn't hold it back. The minimum wage will be on the agenda in November. Did you know that? November 5th, when you go to vote, the consideration is moving it from 725 to 825. 
participation means that you must be engaged to respond. So the first thing is, unless you feel that direct response, you do not get engaged. If you have a child, if you have a mother, if you have health care, if you have school bills to pay, you are involved. Secondly, the feeling of powerlessness. 41 bullets for pulling out a wallet, walking down the street with Skittles, knocking on a door to get help 24 years old after your car gets into a crash, knocking on the door for help, knocking on the door for help and someone feels so upset they call 911 and you are dead. Two jobs you worked, you moved to North Carolina from Florida to be with your fiance, explain that. I know there's a feeling of powerlessness in this country, but guess what? Each state must consider its laws, whether it's stand your ground or stop and frisk or the Jersey Turnpike's rules when it comes to pulling over our brothers. We have to figure it out and support the Attorney General's fight to end unfair sentencing. But there's some good news. I met a man who was not a young man, and as my husband said, I'm no longer the young wife, just younger. That's all right, that's all right always will be the younger wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I met a man and asked him how he got his job. He was a director with a big staff. He said that he went to the organization with his resume and skill sets. He worked in IT, went to the company and inquired about a job. They said there was no job. He came back every day at 8.30 a.m. dressed for work. He sat there and they passed him by until he got up to the floor where the IT building was located. He said, I will intern, an unpaid intern. He was a father of children. He was in his 40s. He was an immigrant and he was married. Every day for eight months, this man showed up at 8.30 a.m. He was the first one there and the last one to leave. There was no job, but guess what the business said? The company said, because you're doing all of this, we must create a job. They created a job. Business community, you have to change the rules sometime and open the door to allow a lot of these other men and women to come in. We cannot simply have individuals check out because they have to check a box regarding their past criminal activity. We must engage them. So don't get tired. Yes, if you're cynical, I understand, but cynicism doesn't mean that you don't stay engaged. Yes, there's some triflingness once you get involved. It's frustrating, it's tiring. Sometimes it's the same people, right? The same people coming out to the meetings, the same people planning the things, the same people leading this, teachers you know, the same students who will volunteer. It is okay, you stay in the grind. And finally, the democratic activism and social justice are possible, the data says, and evident when students have access to role models. Junius Williams is a prime example of this involvement. I remember when he conceived of YMS over dinner. Again, we have sons and sons who challenge us. We have raised them to have voices. And they say, well, daddy, your day is not always the right thing that you did. Daddy, you don't know what you're doing. You don't even know how to turn on the computer. And so our youngest son got my husband hooked up to Facebook. And he had a goal that he was going to get a thousand Friends, and how many do you have? I don't know, maybe 2,000 now. But what he said is that young people need to have a place. He then moved out the way and made room for Kalina Berryman to shine. Kalina Berryman moved out the way to make other young people shine. Some of y'all need to move out the way and let some of these people shine. A lot of the old Johns want to hold on and you 
cannot build a community and you cannot have some people to participate if you want the shine and you all the time. It can't work. The model must be inclusive to the point where there is a partnership and a synergy that happens. Young people need information, but older people need information. And I appreciated the comment that was made by one of the young people about voter and involvement. They said their grandparents, was it you, Ronnie? Said that his grandparents and his parents got involved because he was able to share that information. You can't go out with misinformation, but you need information. You need information. And so here we are today, a great organization. The question is, what are we doing? when we go back to the community. If you are a zombie, I hope that somebody comes and gives you CPR. If you know some zombies in your community, it's time to wake them up. Playtime is over. Not only because November is voting time, every day that we wake up, it is time to be on the front line until all Americans have a chance to get the piece of chicken you have. Then it has not happened. If for nothing else, fight for that. Fight for the voice for women to be able to share the same space with you. They're going to do it a little bit differently, brothers. It's all right. It's all cool. Somebody may come up and they may pray not to Jesus at this event. They may pray to Allah. And guess what? God will still love you. In the end, it is about making sure that we have a better community. I pray that my sons will understand that the times that we were unable to fix the roof, we were unable to do all those things, was because we tried to do our best for justice. I am proud to be a part of this organization. I thank this organization for staying in the vineyard for 31 years. Madam President, Godspeed, I wish you well. To the NAACP, continue to do what you're doing. To all of the activists in this room, to the teachers, and most importantly, to the young people. I'm not concerned if you talked. I'm not concerned about any of those things. What I'm most concerned about is that you understand that your world is bigger than your block. But until your block is the very best block, you better not leave and go out in the world. May God bless you and keep you. Peace.